So to start off with, I wanted to show you the differences between our different homework help resources. So um, we're going to cover three and then we'll throw in Turk as well. Um, so we've got Search Discover, eLibrary, and Search Knowledge Source. So the main difference between these is the audience. So here we'll see we've got um, elementary and middle school starting over in Search Discover. Then eLibrary and Search Knowledge Source are more for middle and high school, but they can also be really useful for um, topic selection for um, undergraduates. So um, folks that are going back to school and community college, especially non-traditional students, or students that haven't really had to write too many papers before in their um, K through 12 experience. So um, these can be really useful for getting um, folks uh, um, interested in certain research topics, uh, but they, um, they don't necessarily have all the scholarly research that your students will need, so they, they would start there if they're college students and then probably move to maybe ProQuest Central or just that big NC Live search bar. But these can definitely get them started as well. All of these are, um, well, none of these are branded with any particular age group. So there is no stigma attached to using these for um, people of any age that maybe want some slightly easier to digest information or um, who are just starting out with research and are a little bit intimidated. These can be used with them without it saying, you know, a, this is a K through 12 resource. So there's no stigma to using these with any audience, but this is sort of the general um, audience you might want to look at. So then um, they all have different content types, which we'll look at. Um, so they've got, um, they all have news and magazine articles. E-library is the only one with scholarly articles right here. And then they also all have reference. And then these two right here have government docs. Um, then they also all have some special features, which we'll talk about. Some of them have pro-con, some of them have some specific assignment support uh, resources like animal facts or country facts, which we'll look at. And what's nice is they're all 100% full text because these are all aimed at novice researchers. So there's no problem with finding a citation that they then can't immediately get access to. Then um, the only other difference here is in article content right here. So both SERS Discoverer and SERS Knowledge Source have articles that are selected individually every day by editors at ProQuest. So the only one with full runs of periodicals is eLibrary. So because of that, SERS Discoverer articles and SERS Knowledge Source articles are not searchable in Summon, whereas eLibrary is. Because Summon, in order to be searchable in Summon, they have to be full runs of periodicals generally. Okay, so that's just a quick, you know, introductory um, slide there for those three resources with a compare and contrast. But Let's go ahead and just get into them. All right. So we'll go to nclive.org. And the way to get to your homework help resources is you click Browse. You can click there, or you can click Browse A to Z right over on the right-hand side of the screen. And this is where I'm going to get to my individual NC Live resources. So like I talked about before, um, when you're doing in-depth research, you probably want to go up to this search bar right up here. Um, but when we're getting started with topic selection or we're working on a specific type of assignment, we might want to go straight to homework help to have that guided research experience. So over here on the subjects, I clicked homework help. And now I have my full list of homework help resources. So I'm going to scroll down here. You can see there's a lot of stuff available here that would be useful for students. So I'm going to go straight down here to SIRS. So we see a bunch of different SERS resources available here. There are actually really only two SERS resources. There's SERS Discoverer, and then there's SERS Knowledge Source. And then SERS Knowledge Source is made up of these three uh, additional SERS databases. SERS Government Reporter, Issues Researcher, and Renaissance. So once we go into SERS Knowledge Source, that'll become a little more clear. But I just wanted to um, broach that right now. So let's head into SERS Discoverer open it up. So this is our elementary middle school bridging resource. So this might not be as useful for y'all, so we'll try to go through it a little more quickly. So in here you'll see, of course, a big easy search bar that your patrons probably already know about, even at that early age. They probably have already been 
Googling things or searching for things on Amazon. So um, that's an easy way to navigate. But then you can also see you've got all of your subjects available right here. And then you've got your special features down here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in vegetables. Try to find an article that's available on that. So all of the content in here is going to be full text, as I mentioned before, and it is um, so they're selected articles from news magazines and from children's publishers. So over here on the left, you can see the source types right here, and you'll also see Lexile ranges. In all three of these resources, Lexile ranges are available. So over here, I could choose, you know, a, let's say a sixth grade reading level and find articles that would be appropriate for that age group. So here's one. Now, um, I just want to mention before we go into an article, when you look at these Lexile ranges, if you choose um, choose one, like sixth grade, like we just chose, if you click on a different Lexile score, it'll replace um, the previous Lexile score we looked at. So if you want a different Lexile range in here, you can um, go up to your advanced search up at the top of the screen, and you can enter in your own Lexile range here, or you can select multiple grade levels. So that's just a quick tip in case you're interested in a, a larger Lexile range or multiple grade level reading, uh, reading levels. Okay, so let's look at the study. So very easy to use, as you can see. Very simple for your, your novice researchers. Um, you'll see the full text of the article here. You've got your citations. And then on the left, you have all of the things you can do to use this article. So the typical things you'd expect, printing, emailing, export to EasyBib if the students are using that. And then um, this site will just take them down to the bottom of the article where they can copy these citations. Um, or they can copy the URL. Or if they're um, confused by a word that's being used in the article, they can use the dictionary and look it up. So a few additional things that are available in here are read speaker. Um, so if you click on that little play button at the top of the article, it will read you the entire article aloud. And then you can also download that article as an MP3. So if you click on that, it'll open it up in a new, um, a new window, and then you can save it from there. That can be useful, especially for longer articles. Um, and then also we have a machine translation over here on the left under Translate. So you can translate to any one of these, the selection of languages. And it'll take a minute um, to do it. And then it also explains that it is an on-the-fly machine translation, um, and it is not intended to replace human translation. So they, they have this little disclaimer up here so that, um, you know, you know that there might be some mistakes in the translation, but it can be better than nothing for, for students that are struggling with um, reading it in, in English language. Okay. So I went back to my search results here. Um, are there any questions about searching in this interface or um, any of the article tools that we just played with? Okay. If you have any questions, throw them in the chat box. Um, I'm gonna head back to my home page and I'll come back to your questions later. Okay, so down here at the bottom of the page, um, then we can get into some of our other tools here. So if your students ever have a need to present on a certain animal, um, you can click on animal facts right here, and then you have a reference source all about various animals. So you can see that there's tons of available animals. Let's click on caribou. And in here, you're going to see pictures of caribou, and these pictures can be used, downloaded and used in presentations and papers by your students. And you also get the basics about what 
that animal's um, physical description is, what their behavior is like, their habitat, where they live, um, their size, and all of that sort of stuff. And then there's also um, some additional articles. So if you click on caribou or reindeer here, then you'll get um, a search, search results for that search term. So you can find more articles about caribou and reindeer. Um, or you can also check out their featured article that they think will, will give you good information about that animal. Um, and then um, there are also more pictures of that animal that they can use in their papers or presentations. That's animal facts. Current events, this is basically just a way to see what's been added most recently in the database. So this would just be new news articles that have been selected specifically for the elementary and middle school audience. Then we also have pro-con leading issues. So if your students ever um, have a pro-con assignment or they have to pick a side in a debate or something like that, they can prepare with these sort of more controversial issues. But these are written for a um, elementary and middle school level. So um, that can be a great resource for that, that age group. So it will give them a topic overview, some terms to know about that particular topic. They've got essential questions with viewpoints, and then they've got articles that they can read to learn more. <clears throat> That's pro-con leading issues right there. And we also have country facts and maps, fairly similar to our um, animal um, navigation. So if you click on, let's go, let's go down here in the south and let's go for North Carolina. Um, so you can get quick facts on the state or country of your choice, along with some additional resources. And then there's also a Science Fair Explorer. So this is kind of a fun tool, um, but it requires Flash for one thing. And then there's not quite as many experiments as you might hope for in here, but it can be a kind of a fun way to explore science. Um, so you've got the growth science, that's always the one I, I like to pick on. Um, and you can you know, do experiments on fruit flies or you know, try to breed fruit flies. And uh, it'll usually have an experiment um, in there, some information, background information about the topic and things like that. So um, it's kind of a fun thing to check out, but um, it's not, it doesn't have, offer quite as many experiments as you might hope for. Um, then the final thing that I think is really exciting is the nonfiction books. So here in nonfiction books, we've got um, full text ebooks. They are PDFs of these eBooks, and they are digital rights management free. So you don't have to download any kind of special reader to read these. You can just download them instantly. So we've got some selected books here. We can also browse them by grade level. Um, we can see all the nonfiction books here, or we can click on any of these um, more underneath each of these subject areas to see the full list of resources that are um, uh, tagged with the subject. So let's go back to the seventh grade <clears throat> and browse. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out, I'm gonna check out this amphibian book because it is a DK eyewitness book, which like we talked about having pictures, um, this can be an interesting way to explore different topics. Um, here, so you'll see there's going to be a preview of the cover here, but you'll need to click the PDF link. So either right here, or it'll show over here and use this article, show PDF, and that'll load the entire ebook as a PDF that the, you can then download. <clears throat> So there's a download PDF button over here on the left. Also, once this loads, then you'll also see the download and print options up here. And you can just read through this entire book right here, all about amphibian. Okay, so 
So that is Surf Discoverer, the whirlwind tour. Um, it's fairly straightforward to use, as you can see. Are there any questions about that? Okay, I'm seeing a question in our chat. Do you have access to the entire DK library or only selected titles? I believe it's only selected titles. And we can um, look, when we're looking at MC Live tools later, we can try to see if we have a title list already available for this. <clears throat> okay. Okay, great. So um, if you think of any more questions about Surge Discoverer, let me know. But for now, we're going to go back up and we're going to head into eLibrary before we finish, um, before we go back into Surge Knowledge Source. Okay. So. We're headed to eLibrary. So this is going to be all about current issues and assignment support. So where eLibrary really shines is in um, helping students work through topic selection and finding resources that align with those topics. So these, uh, this resource is aimed at middle school to high school students, but also community college students would feel at home in here. There are some um, community college, excuse me, community college and like first year undergraduates who feel at home in here. Um, and especially because there are um, full text, full text and full runs of periodicals and there are scholarly journals in here as well. So um, everything again here is built with a novice researcher in mind. We've got that nice search bar that's obvious, easy to find where you can just get started right there. And then we also have some topic browsing capability right here on the home page. So here you'll see what the trending topics are. So these are our most searched topics. We've got the Articles of Confederation. We have the Death Penalty, Gabrielle Garcia Marquez, Alice Walker. So we can already see the diversity of subjects that are covered by eLibrary. Everything from history to literature to current issues that people are interested in researching. Then down here we have our editor's picks. These are some um, other topics that the editors would like to foreground this month. And then down below we have this whole topic browsing interface. So we have common assignments. So for instance, if your students have to do a, an assignment on careers that they would be potentially interested in, this is a way that they can browse through careers. Um, same thing with famous people, environmental issues, um, and countries. Again, that's another popular assignment. Down here, we also have subjects. So um, for example, I know in middle school, I had to often find a, an article that had to do with what we were currently studying in the class and then present it. So um, I remember doing this in my science class in seventh and eighth grade in middle school. So I came up with the example of if you had a seventh grade patron who was trying to find a news article that related to what they were currently studying in their science class. So um, what they are currently studying is weather, weather patterns, um, human effects on weather patterns, and how the weather patterns can also affect human lives. So I'm going to explore a topic for that patron. So we'll start off in subjects. We'll go over here to science and mathematics. Click on science. And then we're going to head over here to environmental and earth science right here. So here we have a lot of different environmental and earth science topics. And we also have a lot of things where um, we can study how humans have an effect on weather, have an effect on the environment. So I'm gonna pick air pollution right here. And here I am in my guided research topic browser. So in here, I'll have a background article that tells me all about the history of air pollution, what it is, um, what the major pollutants are. If I continue to scroll down, I've got my gallery of images. So again, these are images that your students can use in their own presentations or in essays that they're working on. I continue to scroll down. I'll see my causes and effects. And then I also have more articles linked here where I can learn more. And what's nice here 
if you look at each of these articles is well they're not all articles for one thing but um, you'll see the type the source type that is um, put on the end of each source each resource that's available through here so here we have our video reference book magazine scholarly journal so if your students ever do have any sort of requirements for the type of resource they have to bring in or the type of resource they have to use when they're researching, then they can easily see at a glance um, whether these will fit. So I'm really interested in this one, this newspaper article uh, about half of air pollution in cities may come from household cleaners and other consumer products. So I'll click on that. And in here, we'll see a fairly similar search interface but it's a little bit more advanced because um, this is, you know, aiming for those researchers, you know, that have maybe had a little bit ex of experience before and also at those older populations that might need um, to synthesize multiple documents, multiple readings into um, one cohesive argument. So over here we'll see related documents where they can keep expanding their research. And then up here we're going to see our Lexile score again. We're going to see our publication information. It's very obvious that this is from a newspaper. And again, we have a translate button. So it's translating from English to any one of these languages. So, and we have a, a read, it, read aloud function as well. So very similar to Search Discoverer. Over here on the right, we have the Use This Document tool. So again, similar. Um, you can save it to your cloud. You can cite it. This will have a pop-up with a cit citation options here and the op uh, option to export it to EasyBid if they use that. So again, very similar, very straightforward. Um, you're going to have the same tools in each of these resources. Okay. So that was navigating through our topic selection tools down here. Now, if you, if your patron doesn't really find anything that's catching their eye through the browsing, but now they've figured out what their topic is, they can go ahead and search in the search bar instead. So we could say we want um, air pollution, China. And here we've got some interesting images that have to do with those topics. And then we also have a bunch of different articles that are available on those topics. Over here on the left, you'll see we've got a greater variety of source types in this, um, this product here. So we've got plenty of newspapers, magazines, scholarly journals, um, images, books, multimedia. We've got transcripts, which generally tend to be, if I click on that, um, that generally tends to be things from All Things Considered, Morning Edition, and other um, public broadcasting networks. If I decided I don't actually want that source type, I can click X right there and go back to seeing all my source types. So if I narrow it down to newspapers because I need a newspaper article, I can check this out here. Now the only thing we're not going to see, we've got you know publication date limiter, we've got um, these two limiters here which use common assignment language like primary sources and scholarly sources so that students um, know how to narrow easily to those commonly requested source types by, by teachers. But the one thing we don't see in this sidebar is Lexile scores. So in order to filter by Lexile measures, we're going to have to go up to our advanced search right up here. So that's where we can get our Lexile score. We can enter it in right there. So even though the Lexile score is commonly displayed, they don't quite have a place to narrow for it. Over here, you have to advance search. So again, we can open up the article, we'll see the full text, we, and we have all of the same tools we were looking at before. Okay, let me know if there are any questions on that. Um, one last thing that I'd like to show you in here is that this also serves educators. So if you click up here in the top left on educators resources and you click this curriculum standards correlation um, then you will get into a, um, a tool that will help teachers make lesson plans 
to coordinate with different curriculum standards. So eLibrary is not only meant for students, but also for their educators. So if we click curriculum standards correlation, if you are on campus, this will um, redirect with no problem. Because I am currently using Wi-Fi, I'm going to go through a different way, but I just want to show you that, um, that link right there, just so you know where to find it. But um, you can also get access to it. I'm going to go quickly through ProQuest Central, and I'm going to get on, onto our ProQuest, um, ProQuest platform and change my databases. And get into eLibrary. Now, when you're in, in your library, you'll be IP authenticated. It'll automatically get you to this spot right here. On browse, it'll, you'll see this page when you click. Sorry, my little drop down's popping down and getting in my way. Um, you will see when you click this link, this is where you'll go to when you're inside your library. Um, so there are two different search interfaces for eLibrary. There's that faceted browsing interface that we were looking at before that really helps your novice researchers um, get started in their research projects. And then there's also this um, version that's on the ProQuest platform. So you could search it along with all of your other ProQuest databases in one place. So um, when you open up your curriculum standards, if you click North Carolina, and then we'll have to scroll down again, North Carolina. Then you get to these standards right here. So um, if I click North Carolina Essential Standards Science and I click seventh grade, um, I can see that they're studying um, earth system structures and processes and they are studying the weather pattern um, and the effects uh, of the atmosphere on humans. Um, we've got some information about that the good health of humans requires monitoring the atmosphere, maintaining air quality and stewardship. And so through there, we can, through these substandards, um, so we can look at, let's see, air pollution, impacts on human health. Once we click view documents, then we can get into a, um, a search, some search results for um, ways to teach students about this important um, standard, this important curriculum standard. So we've got an article about teaching about air quality, um, all sorts of interesting things that are education based. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. You won't have to go through that little backdoor method that I went through to get to this other search interface. You'll just click that little button in eLibrary, Educators Resources and Curriculum Standards Correlation to find that information. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about eLibrary. All right, looks like we don't have any questions at this time. So I'm gonna head back to the NC Live website, go back to my subjects here on the left, go to homework help, and I'm gonna go to our last resource that we were talking about. So um, it's our most recommended homework help resource. And if I scroll down, again, we'll see, it's also available down here as a link and then um, click Search Knowledge Source. So if you recall, before we went into Search Discoverer at the beginning of this session, I mentioned that Search Knowledge Source is made up of three sub-databases that we also link to separately in our A to Z list. So that's Issues Researcher, Government Reporter, and Renaissance. So that's three databases in one. So you can search across all three of these resources using this search bar. Now it says search all of your search resources. That's not exactly true because we also have access to SERS Discoverer, which was the elementary and middle school 
uh, platform that we looked at first. So this is going to search across these three SERS resources in one search bar. Just want to make that clear. Okay. So um, this is going to be best for your middle, high school, and possibly those new um, undergraduate students or community college students who are trying to do some um, controversial issues papers, maybe in their freshman English class. This can be a great way to do topic exploration. So in here, we don't have any scholarly journal articles. Again, in here, in SERS Knowledge Source, we're only going to have selected news and magazine articles and then some reference content as well and government documents. So in here, um, we have our pro-con leading issues. This is the main portion of SERS Knowledge Source that you'll, you'll see when you first get in. So in here, um, you can see there's a bunch of different trending issues here. Um, so let's go ahead and click on one of these, driverless vehicles. And in here, we'll see some guided um, research help. So you've got your essential question, you've got some background information, and then you have two viewpoints. Um, driverless vehicles may have many benefits, um, or they pose too many risks. And then we have three articles on each of those viewpoints that will argue each of those viewpoints. And then down below that, we have search results that have to do with driverless cars. So we can find even more articles that'll help us, um, you know, be able to argue one side or the other. Then we also have three tools here that are available for each one of these um, leading issues pages. So we have critical thinking, and these are some questions that um, your students may want to be able to answer about this topic. Then we have a timeline of important um, milestones in that topic, whatever it may be. And then we have a research guide. And this is just going to be the same for every single one. It's basically just this um, editable PDF that they could either print out or they can fill in on their computers that just helps guide them through picking a topic and um, you know, knowing uh, what purpose they have for their project, who their audience is, and um, some other things like that. And so then they develop their, their research topic here. That's available there, the research guide. And um, if they're interested in any of these articles, they just click on the link and they're in. And again, we've got this um, read aloud feature. Again, we have translation and we have very similar um, ways to use the article. So this also has some related subjects so that if students want to do some more research on traffic safety or um, American attitudes, public opinion polls, they can do that just at the click of a button. Just click on traffic safety and then they can get everything that's available on traffic safety in SERS Knowledge Source. So again, that was using this um, browsing interface to pick, pick an article, or excuse me, pick a leading issue and then navigate through thinking through that leading issue and, and what argument they want to make about it. If they're not interested in any of these trending issues, they can go down here to all of the ProCon issues. And you can see there are tons available here. They're divided up into subcategories as well. So if they're interested in ethics, they can click any of these like stem cells or animal cloning, child labor, all sorts of, I mean, it, it really runs the gamut. Um, in addition there, you'll also see these that have a star next to them and they are highlighted in green. That's going to be sort of a overarching issue that will have a variety of pro-con issues arranged within it. So if I'm interested in bioethics and cloning, then um, you know I might be interested in some of these subcategories. That'll help your patrons sort of narrow down their subject. So there's some other things down here at the bottom. It's more just sort of like fun stuff, like 
a little poll that they change frequently. They'll let you know what has been recently added. And you'll see they were, um, they were last updated yesterday with some new newspaper articles. Scroll back up to the top. Okay, so that is that ProCon leading issues browsing interface. Then we have our government reporter interface, and this is going to be all government documents. So it'll be government pub publications. Um, in here, we'll see it on a variety of different subjects. So if we're interested in international affairs, we can see what's been recently added. Um, we've got a Department of Justice press release. Um, we've got humanrights.gov. These are all sorts of different articles and publications by government entities. Um, down here, we'll get some features. So if you're interested in what a particular federal agency is up to, so for example, the Environmental Protection Agency, we can see what um, has what recent press releases are available from the EPA or recent publica other publications that are available from the EPA. Right there. Um, we also have these National Archives documents. And these are going to be um, all sorts of different um, moments in our nation's history. So we have the Constitution here, we have the Bill of Rights, um, the United States expands west, and um, we can click on any of these subjects, like the Louisiana Purchase, and we have some information that was written by um, SIRS staff. And then down here, we have documents that are um, provided by the National Archives and Records Administration, scans of um, maps, and um, we've got Let's see, general orders. So we can see some primary source materials about each of these moments in history. That could be a very interesting way to support your student researchers as well. And then finally, in this section that's all about government documents, <clears throat> we also have the US Supreme Court. So if your student is really interested in um, legal issues, um, and they're you know, interested in different um, interpretations of the Constitution and Bill of Rights, they can go here and um, you know, choose any of these areas. So we could choose the First Amendment here, and we can find all of the Supreme Court decisions that um, have to do with that amendment or article of the Constitution. So in here, in the United States versus Apple or APEL, APEL um, in here you'll see the syllabus, you'll see a majority concurring opinion, and if there's a dissenting opinion, that'll also be available here. So, some heavy reading, but could be useful for some assignments. So again, all of this is searchable through this search bar. This is just an easy way to sort of show you some of the highlighted information in the, it, that's contained within SIRS Knowledge Source. Okay, our final section is Renaissance. And this is going to be more current issues, but that are about arts and culture. They also have a literary corner where you can have a guided browsing interface to find um, information about different authors. So if I click here on um, Mark Twain, then it basically just does a search for Mark Twain and gets me all of the articles that are about him. There's another guided browsing interface there. But again, we can just do a search right up here. We can also search for Mark Twain up here and find all the articles about Mark Twain that are available. Or we could do something about air pollution. And we can find um, all sorts of different articles about air pollution. Um, we've got government documents, primary sources, multimedia and statistics. And then we've also got these, um, these suggested search terms as well. So again, this is really built for those new researchers who might be a little overwhelmed in ProQuest Central or 
using that sum and search bar when they're first starting out. This can really help them, like guide them and help them find um, research that, that will help support their arguments. Okay, so that's search knowledge source. Those are the three main resources I want to show you. Are there any questions about any of them or any questions about the differences between them before we move on to check out Turk really quick? Okay, everyone's pretty clear it looks like. All right, sounds good. So let's go back to NC Live and we will take off this filter and go to Testing and Education Reference Center. And then here is where we're gonna find most of our test prep material. So um, we've got a high school section, we have a college prep section, um, we also have a career section. So from the test that y'all told me people are interested in, um, we've got a ton of advanced placement right here. And in here we're going to have practice tests and we'll also have online books. So um, for example, if I'm interested in AP Biology, I just click start now and I'll have to log in. So you can register right here. It's a free registration and to use anything in Testing and Education Reference Center, you will have to make a free account. Um, this is mostly for their um, online testing interface because that way you can save your progress, leave and come back and keep working on the same test again and again and keep track of your progress as well. So um, you don't have to include an email address if you don't want to, but they highly recommend you do so you can retrieve your login information. But I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my existing account. And it's going to load our practice test interface. And we'll see we have two practice tests available for AP Biology. Um, so we can take it untimed if we want to just practice without stress, or we can take it timed to um, try to emulate testing conditions. When we're ready, we just click start. We answer questions, practice, and then um, once we're done, we can score it. Um, we can also cancel if we're doing really poorly and we want to study some more before we try again or we can click save to step away for a moment. So I'm gonna click score. It's gonna warn me that I haven't really finished it very well, but that little um, blue start button is gonna to turn to a review button and it's gonna give me a score as well. So I'll click on review. It usually takes a little bit to load, um, but I'll mention while it's loading, they've recently added a translation feature for all of their tests up here to the top left. And they also have a, um, an about this test um, thing available right here too. So if you're interested in learning more about what the test is, who should take it, um, how it's scored and all of that, that you can just click about the test right up there. So of course I have taken us out of the review area and it'll take another minute to load. Um, but I'll also mention while we're in here, you can only take each section one time. And that is um, without creating a new account. So, um, but they are actually putting in a fix that will be fully live by January. They're gonna start in October and then everything should have this ability by January to take the test as many times as you want. So they are working on that functionality. Okay. So then here I can see all of the information about what I got correct and incorrect. I click on um, any answer to get an explanation of why what I picked was correct or incorrect. So that's that testing interface. Um, let's go into, let's do college prep this time, go to ACT. 
And so that's, again, they have practice courses available there. They also have online courses where you can take a practice test and then it will sort of um, give you sections that you need to work on more. So that can be a useful tool for um, the tests that have that. Check that out. But then they also have eBooks. So if I click Start Now, it'll put me into the PDF of the eBook. And you can download this whole eBook, um, again, digital rights management free, just as a PDF. You don't have to have a special reader. Again, all you have to have is a PDF reader. So um, that's a really great option for people who are working on learning about a test, um, working on preparing for a test, developing a study schedule, and all of that. So that's the eBooks there. And if you're wondering what is in here, there's a title list that they update quarterly right up here at the top. Let's see if they've updated this one. So they've got one, they just sent me one for September, um, but currently um, this one's available for June, but um, it's mostly updated. But in here you'll see, so for example, um, let's find one we were just looking at. Let's find ASVAB in here. So here we have our practice test for the ASVAB. Um, we've got the Peterson's copyright date, when it was last updated, 2007 in this case, and the last update to the standardized test by the testing company that, that actually administers the test was in 2004. So this is how you can sort of check, even if it's got a, a publication date that seems a little older, it might be that the test just hasn't been updated. Um, so that, that can be something to look for. Okay. So again, under a career, we have ASVAB right there. We can also search for tests right up here. And if you tried searching before and you didn't get great results, try again now. They've really done some good things with their um, relevance rankings. So you'll, you'll be more likely to find um, the actual materials that you're looking for. We have practice tests, we have an ebook, um, and then they also have um, another test prep book for officer candidate tests. Okay, um, and then I also mentioned that there are some basic skills things in here. So if you look under basic skills, they've got English and writing, math tutorials, um, question banks, and then they also have math videos. So they just added these. It's about 45 um, videos that explain basic math concepts. So that can be very useful for tutoring or for homework help. Okay. So that's my crash course in Turk. Are there any questions about Testing and Education Reference Center? Anything that you want to see? Okay. It looks like we don't have any questions at the moment. So um, I also talked a little bit about title lists. So for the N2 Live tools that you might want to use, um, you can go up to Library Staff, and then over here on the right, you'll get all sorts of different um, tools that you can use. These are more for your electronic resources folks um, to make the most of N2 Live resources or do troubleshooting or get their usage statistics. Over here on the left, you'll also find our collections information about what we currently have access to. Um, if you click Detailed Collections Data and then scroll down, you can get to our title list. Let's see if we have one currently for SIRS. Discover, we do. Okay, so in here, you'll find what our coverage is for DK Eyewitness Books. And I'll, I'll include that as well in my follow-up information. Um, so, some other things that you might want to use to make the most of NC Live is over here on the left, we have NC Live training, which you're in right now. Uh, we have hands-on tutorials that take you through basics of each of these databases. Um, then we also have um, webinars and events. So here's, here's the one we're in right now. And then other upcoming events in person and online. And then we have links to in-person training events and tons of recorded webinars. So I'm gonna put this recording up on this page. So if you wanna to refer to it, you can. I'll also send it out to you afterwards. 
And then um, let me go back. So I'm back on library staff over here on the right. So we just went to NC Live training. Then there's also shared promotional and instructional materials. And this will give you um, materials from vendors, from NC Live, and from member libraries, all about our different resources and about NC Live in general. So here is where you can get um, for eLibrary. Um, we've got a demo video. We have bookmarks, posters, and a LibGuide that you can use or um, copy into your own system if you use LibGuides. And then we've got plenty more where that came from, plenty more social media, graphics, posters, all sorts of things like that. That's right there. And I'll send you a link to that as well. And then um, down here at the bottom, you'll find our Twitter feed and you'll find um, ways to keep in contact. So if you want to keep um, keep updated with NC Live News, you can join our listserv or follow us on social media. And then um, if you ever have any trouble, go here to our help section right here on library staff or at the very top of every page, you've got a get help button right there. We've got FAQs and then we also have a contact uh, support form for the NC Live help desk. So um, I staff the help desk along with Kim and Zeb and uh, Daniel, and we um, uh, trade off answering questions and getting you, to, getting you to the information that you need. So if you ever have a question, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can email us, use this form, or call us on the phone.